أفلح من يصلي على محمد وآل محمد أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من العين الشيطان الغوي الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والآقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المعسومين المظلومين الميامين المهديين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد ولعنة الله أدائم على عدائهم إجمعين إلى قيام يوم الدين ما بعد فقال الله تعالى في كتابه المجيد عوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أينما تكون يأتي بكم الله جميعا إن الله على كل شيء قدير الله عز وجل قال الله عز وجل في كتابه المجيد الله says in his book بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم wherever you are Allah will bring you together and I've mentioned this verse once but I'm going to now look at this verse again that wherever you are, Allah Azza wa Jal will bring you all together. Yati bikum Allahu jami'an. Allah will bring you all together. And what I want to look at tonight briefly, it will be a brief lecture, it won't be too long tonight, is some of the commonalities between the mission and beginning of Imam Hussein's mission and the beginning of the mission of Imam al-Mahdi ajallallahu ta'ala farajuh al-sharif and drawing some intellectual comparisons between them I think is very important to understand and through that we also understand why in Karbala we find Imam al-Mahdi why we read for example Ziyarat Ashura you know uh, and give us a risk wa yarzuquni talaba thariq ma' imamin mansurin min ahli Muhammad or min ahlul bayt salamu alayhi alayhim ajma'in Allahumma salli ala that we read this in so many different places as I've mentioned and you can see through these nights I've been mentioning this that where we find Abu Abdullah we find Imam Mahdi where we find Imam Mahdi we find Abu Abdullah why so many commonalities between these two figures you know in fact there's a whole book written on this where Sayyid Sadruddin al-Kufanji in Najaf um, on this very subject, it's a very beautiful book, you know. But I want to look at this from a slightly different angle. For example, when we look at the initial kalam of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, when he's re leaving the city of Medina or his arrival in Karbala or his, or his departure from Makkah, he says, Nahnu ahlu baytu nabi, that we are of the people of the house of the Prophet. We were expelled from our homes, from the home of our grandfather. And oh Allah, help us against the Dhalimeen. Now let's go to the situation of Sahib al-Asri wa Zaman, the Imam of our time. A Kufin shall be killed, and he shall be killed by a general from the army of the Sufyani. The Sufyani will be the enemy of Imam al-Zaman, of the Imam of our time. The Sufyani will then search for the Imam in the city of Medina. Wait a second. Who was searching for Imam Hussein in the city of Medina? Ben Umayyah. Imam will then leave the city of Medina for which city? Makkah. Imam al Mahdi will leave the city of Medina for Makkah. Who left the city of Medina for Makkah? Imam al Hussein. Think of the Bidayah, the beginning of the mission. It is so similar, it is not a coincidence. Of Imam al Mahdi's khuruj minan Makkah, minan Medina la Makkah, wal khuruj al Hussein salamu alayhi alayhi minan Medina la Makkah. It's the same, the departure from the city of Medina towards Makkah. The Sufyani will then begin searching for the Mahdi. 
Because the Sufyani knows now that the Mahdi has come. Word has come that the Mahdi has arrived. The Sufyani will begin to search for him. فَيَنْفِرُوا الْمَهْدِي مِنْهَا إِلَى مَكَّةِ As Imam Al-Baqir tells us, وَيَبْلَغُوا أَمِيرُ جَيْ سُفْيَانِ أَنَّ الْمَهْدِي قَدْ خَرَجَ إِلَى مَكَّةِ And the head of the army of the Sufyani will know that the Imam has left towards Makkah. فَيَبْعَثُوا جَيْشًا عَلَى أَثَرِهِ And he will send an army out to look for the Mahdi, the 12th Imam. And then a surah will be heard from the sky. O desert, destroy the people on you. فَيَخْسِفُوا بِهِمْ فَلَا يَفْلَتْ مِنْهُمْ إِلَّا ثَلَاثَةْ نَفَرْ And the desert will swallow them and only three people will be left. This will be one of the first miracles of the Mahdi. Sahib al Asr wa Zaman. May, Allah, may our souls be ransomed. Taht al Qadamay. Under his feet. That this will be one of the first miracles that Allah will manifest. That the army of the Sufyani that is chasing after the Imam of the time will be swallowed in the desert, somewhere between Medina and Makkah. Then the Imam will arrive in the city of Makkah. This will be a very powerful and beautiful moment. He will have his back against the Kaaba. Bain al-Rukun wal maqam according to some traditions. And then he will begin to announce his message for the very first time. And the 313 would already be there. So now this is the general message for the people. Before that, the 313 have already arrived in the city of Makkah to meet the Imam. 313 companions, and as we already spoke about, at least 50 of them will be women, will be with the Imam. So yes, there will be women and men in the army as the top people in the army of the Imam of the time. The Imam will then have his back towards the Kaaba. He will then begin a very long khutbah, beautiful khutbah, where basically in this khutbah he will now say certain things that are very important. He will say, if, any be, if anybody wants to know Adam, come and see me. I won't go, don't, no need to go through all the Arabic since this is an English speech. He will say, if anybody wants to know Adam, see me. If anybody wants to know Nuh, see me. If anybody wants to know Ibrahim, salamu alayhi, see me. If anybody wants to know Musa, fa'ana ola bi. I'm first one. He says, ola. I come before Musa. Meaning whatever knowledge is with Nabi Musa is with me. Whatever knowledge is with Ibrahim is with me. Whatever knowledge was with, with Adam is with me. And remember, we say we believe that Adam taught Allah. Allama al-asma kullaha. Allah taught Adam all of the names. All this divine knowledge is in the heart of the Mahdi, in the heart of the Imam of the time. He will then say, whoever wants to know Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam shall see me. Meaning whatever divine book that there exists in the world, the knowledge of it is with the Mahdi. The haq of it will be with the Mahdi. And he will have his back against the Kaaba. But then he will say something very interesting which is almost identical to the, to the khutbah of Imam Hussein alayhi salam where he says, Inna li alaykum haqqun al-qurba min Rasulillah. He says that I have a right of my relationship with, of, with Rasulullah which is closer than you. In antumuna wa mana'tumuna. Even if, even though, except you denied us. So, there will be a group of people that still exist that will deny the Mahdi. And what do we read in Dua Nudba? What do we read in the khutbah of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam again? That their intention was to break the connection between the Prophet and his Ahlul Bayt. Right? We read this in Dua Nudba. We read this, Dua Nudba is from our 12th Imam. That there is this constant propaganda, this constant attempt to, to detach the descendants of, of the Prophet from the Prophet himself. Either by adding in Banu Abbas, adding other people in this. This is what, the Prophet, this is what Imam al-Mahdi says. That I am most deserving to be in this position than you, even though 
ممن يظلمنا فقد خفنا وظلمنا وطردنا من ديارنا وأب وأبنائنا that yet we have been thrown out of our homes who was thrown out of his home Imam al Hussein this is almost the exact words of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam it cannot be a coincidence that the khutbah of the Mahdi al Qa'im bin Ali Muhammad may Allah hasten his reappearance is almost identical to the khutbah of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam Look at this, this is amazing, mind-boggling. How the mission of Imam al Hussein and the mission of the Mahdi are so similar, even in their words. He says, وَبَغِيَ عَلَيْنَا وَدَفَعْنَا عَنْ حَقِّنَا وَإِفْتَرَى وَإِفْتَرَى عَلَى الْأَهْلِ الْبَاطِلْ عَلَيْنَا And we have been rebelled against. That the people of batil and invention and falsehood have made up lies against us. And do not abandon us. La takhdulna. Do not abandon us. Do not do khidlan to us as you did khidlan to Hussein. Look at the words he's using, subhanAllah. He's saying, learn from your mistakes of the past, O Ummah. Now I have come, he is saying. Now the Mahdi has come, the Qa'im has arrived. Wansuruna, rather, and come to our help. Yansurukum Allah Ta'ala, and Allah will come to your help. But my point is again that the commonalities between the mission of Imam al Hussein and the missions of Imam al Mahdi are uncanny. They're incredible. And another lesson that we learn from this, a moral lesson, is that there cannot be peace without justice. You cannot simply say, okay, Muslim Ummah, I'm here now, but everything that has been done to Ahlul Bayt, let's forget about it. No. The Imam of the time makes it clear that my forefathers were subject to great oppression. You cannot just put all this under the rug. What was done to the Ahlul Bayt, salamu alayhim. That is why the Imam makes a point of mentioning that the people have rebelled against us. And now today do not betray us, meaning as my grandfather Hussein was betrayed. And now those who come to our aid will come to the aid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is where the riwayah of Imam al-Bakr says that it is before this point that the 313 will arrive like disparate clouds coming together as one. Subhanallah. So think of when you go outside and you look at the sky and you see all these clouds everywhere. Each one of these clouds represents one leader of the, of the army of Imam al-Mahdi. Imagine this. And you see the clouds all over the earth in the four corners of the world. And Allah brings them together as one cloud. That's the example given here. And the 313 that will come will most likely not even know each other. At least many of them will not know each other. They will meet each other for the first time in the city of Makkah. But each of them would be guided by a special message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A year before, according to some traditions, before the coming of, of the Mahdi. Or a certain time before, there's different traditions to this effect. And they will make their way to the city of Makkah. It could be a wife, it could be a husband. Allah knows. Allah knows who they are. Because there's 50 women there as well. 50 ladies, noble women. Each of them will come and Allah will bring their intellects together, their ukul together. That they will now have a combined superhuman intelligence. This is amazing. It's not, sci it's, it's not sci science fiction. This is what we read in the ahadith of Ahlul Bayt. Alayhim, that their ukul and their intellects, will, there will be a jam'ah, a coming together of their intellects. As the riwayah states in Al-Kafi, 
from Imam al-Bakr And then they will build the army of the Imam of the time. Sallu ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Another interesting component of both the army of Imam al-Zaman, the Imam of our time, and Imam al-Hussein is the army will be made up of very different kinds of people. As we said, right, it's like clouds coming together. You wouldn't think black and white, Asian and African, but that's how the army of the Imam will look like. It's not going to be Arab or Persian, or it's going to be a mixture of humanity. Of Shia, of course, followers of Ahlul Bayt, salam alaykum. And when we look at the army of Imam al Hussein, isn't it amazing? We have everyone from Wahab to Habib ibn Madahir to John to Zuhair ibn Qayn. We have women, we have men. Everybody's doing their part, everybody is playing their role in the army of Imam al Hussein. Black, white, rich, poor, tribal leader, convert. You have people from all these different walks of life coming together. We don't necessarily need Western modernity to teach us about multiculturalism. We have the army of Imam al-Hussein we have Medina to Nabi, and we have the army of Sahib al-Asri wa Zaman. May Allah hasen his reappearance, which shows us how the Shia can come from so many different places at once. All in the support of the Imam and with the sincerity in their hearts. And isn't it amazing how the majlis of Imam al Hussein as well? We find it from everywhere from Norway to the Philippines. I, was, I had an opportunity to spend some time in Africa in 2018 for Muharram. And after my time in Mombasa, which was on the coast, I went to Dar es Salaam. Mombasa is on the Indian Ocean in the east of East Africa to the city of Dar es Salaam, which is also on the east coast of Africa. And in both communities, I found indigenous, local, black Africans doing ma'atam, teaching in Hawza, teaching kifaya and makasib. They're not Arab, they're not Persian. They're Africans, born in Africa. Went to study, but born in Africa with their own masjid, with their own customs. Maybe the food we're not used to, maybe the way they do matam or the way they do majlis is different, but it is their masjid. It is their love for Imam al Hussein. It is their love for Imam al Mahdi. And nobody could say we love Na'udhu Billah more than them. And this is what we see in the army of Imam al Hussein. This is what we see in the army of Imam al Mahdi. There is no room for the idea that my culture is better, my ethnicity is better, my background is better. There is no concept of superiority except in our a'mal and our wilaya and devotion to Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Salamullahi alayhim ajma'een. Imam al Hussein also says in his khutbah in Karbala, do not be tricked by the world. The world is taghayyarat wa tanakkarat. That the world is constantly changing its colors. It deceives you. It may present something that looks good to you, but in reality it is evil. It plays games with the mind. In reality, or rather, in, Imam al Mahdi will say something similar in his khutbah where he says, the world has neared its end, that it is perishing. That now you will decide whether you are seeking akhirah or whether you are seeking dunya. Number three among the commonalities. Imam al Hussein, what, is he, what did he call the people towards? So let's start from the beginning. Let's review very quickly among the commonalities. Imam leaves the city of Medina for what city? Makkah. Imam al-Mahdi leaves the city of Medina for what city? Makkah. Oh, wait, let's take this further. What city was Imam al Hussein heading towards from Makkah? Who can tell me? Which? Kufa. 
Where will Imam Mahdi go from the city of Makkah? Kufa. Is this a coincidence? That the journey of Imam al Hussein and the journey of Imam al Mahdi is the same journey? It's amazing. Think about it. And then number two, we see in their first few words that they mention, they mention about the haq of Ali Muhammad being taken away. That there is no such thing as peace with Silm without Adam. There is no peace without justice. The Imam makes it very clear. Imam and Hussein mentioned many times about the oppression of Banu Umayyah, that he's been taken out of the home of his family. What do we read in the, kala, in, in, in the words of Dua Nudba? From its beginning to its end. Is it not a dua of protestation? A dua, a dua demanding justice? It is. What do we see in the first initial words of Imam Zaman in the city of Makkah? The same thing. Almost as if it's so close to the kalam of Imam al Hussein that if you didn't say it was a kalam of the sahib of the, of the, of the owner of the time, Sahib al Zaman, you would think it's a khutbatul Hussein, salamullah alayhi himself. Thus, the closest to Hussein is the closest to the Mahdi, the closest to the Mahdi is closest to Hussein. Salamullah alayhi wa ajma'i. Then we see, again, both of them emphasizing and not being deceived by the dunya. That those that are deceived by this world, looking for their ultimate happiness from people, will not join the mission of Imam al Hussein. And what does he, Imam al Hussein tell them when he's leaving? He never guarantees them victory in dunya. You know that, right? He never guaranteed them victory in dunya. What he guaranteed them was victory in akhirah. Imam al Mahdi will not guarantee people that if you are with me, you won't suffer. If you are with me, you won't get hurt. If you are with me, you won't be martyred. No. What he guarantees us is that we are on Sabilul Haq, on the path of truth. He won't give other guarantees to people. We have to choose if that's the path that we want or we don't want. Salu ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Now, moving forward, what are some of the things, the first and most important two things that Imam al Hussein invited the people to? In his letter to the people of Basra, in his khutbah, Ad'ukum ila kitabillah wa sunnat nabi. That I call you to the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Nabi. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam never called people to himself. He called them to the sunnah of the Nabi. He said, if you want to follow the way of the Prophet, then nobody is closer to this path than me. But you're not following me on my own, Hussein, yani, bidhati. No, you're following the Prophet. And then Imam al Hussein says, what in his letter to the people of Basra and other places? He says, the sunnah has died. Am yatat. And bid'ah has, and innovation has, come alive. Now what does Sahib al-Zaman say? Inni ad'ukum ilallah wa ila rasulihi. I invite you to Allah and to his messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wal amalu bi kitabihi. And to work with God's book, for Allah's book. وَإِمَاتَةُ الْبَاطِلُ وَإِحْيَاءُ سُنَّتِ And I call upon you to kill, to bring to an end, literally, that's what he's saying, untruth, batil, and to bring to life, وَإِحْيَاء, and bring to life again, سُنَّتِهِ Sunnah of who? Sunnah of the Mahdi? Who's Sunnah? Rasulullah. My dear brothers and sisters, this is not the sunnah of Sahib al-Zaman, the sunnah of Imam al-Hussein, this is sunnah of Rasulullah. 
but they are the manifestation, the living example, and the hujja, and the proof of that sunnah. This is the path of tashayyuh, kitabullah, wa sunnah. Hence, we are ahlu sunnah. This is ahlu sunnah. In fact, there's a very nice book by Tijani Samawi, which says, Shia are the real Ahlul Sunnah. It's a beautiful book. For those who are really interested in reading it, he was a Tunisian convert from who was a Sunni and became Shia. He met Sayyid Muhammad Bakr al-Sadr in Najaf. It's a beautiful story. He wrote a book called Thumma um, Thum, um, Ihtadayt. Then I was guided. And then he wrote a book, Shia, that the Shia are the real Ahlul Sunnah. And he wrote many other books. They're very good books. And they're translated into English. And I highly, highly, highly recommend you read them. They're very good books. Especially in, the, in like 20 years ago when I started my learning and coming to Islam, I found these books to be very useful for understanding some of the foundations of Tushayyu and Shiism. Nevertheless, when the Prophet says, إِنِّي تَارِكُمْ فِيكُمْ ثَقَلَيْنِ كِتَابُ اللَّهُ وَعَتْرَى that I'm leaving you two things, the book and my family. This is the meaning that the sunnah will always be dead without the family of the Prophet. The sunnah will not come to life without the family of the Prophet. That yes, they are calling people to the sunnah of the Prophet. But that sunnah, in order for it to come alive, in order for it to be true, Imam al-Mahdi is telling us that we have to follow his path. Imam al Hussein is saying what? Rashad, that I'm calling you to the path of right guidance, the path of the book of Allah and the Messenger of the and the Messenger of Allah. But what does he say in that same letter to the people of Basra? So people don't misunderstand. I'm not saying book of Allah and Sunnah and we go on Harry, you know, into the sunset. No, no. Imam al Hussein says what? Wa ana ahaku finas fi makam Rasulillah. And I am the most, Imam al Hussein, the most rightful to be in the position of Rasulullah today. So Imam is not saying kitab and sunnah as you want and just go and run away. No. Kitab and sunnah in the haq of Ahlul Bayt. This is very important point. So I don't want Mu'minin to misunderstand. Kitab and sunnah does not mean without Ahlul Bayt. Kitab and Sunnah is given its meaning when the haq and the rights of Ahlul Bayt are respected. Sallu ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. The Imam, salamullahi alayhi, as I mentioned to you, never promised worldly victory. He did not promise worldly victory. What he promised was najat and salvation, but not necessarily worldly victory. And this is where there are only two groups of people that either understand the message of the Imam or they do not understand the message of the Imam. As Allah says in Surah Zumar, Ayah 9, قُلْ هَلْ يَسْتَوِيَ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَوِيَ الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ That those who know are they equal to those who don't know. Here, there are different darajat of tawfiq and knowledge of God's divine gifts and the knowledge that people have. What do I mean here? I don't want to go into too much theology in depth here, but the Imam Salamullah Alayhi, Imam Al Hussein, had about five meetings between Makkah and Karbala, or even between Medina and Karbala. Five meetings with five different people. Did you know that? Five meetings. And each of these meetings give us an idea of how the Imam understands Allah Azza wa Jal and how the Imam wants us to understand our purpose in our life today. One meeting, I'll give you an example. Imam meets Farazdaq. Imam is leaving the city of Makkah. Farazdaq is coming in. Farazdaq, the famous poet of Ahlul Bayt, the famous poet at the time of Imam Zain al-Abideen, 
very important person in, in Islamic history, Faraz Daq. He used to compose poetry in the praise of the Ahlul Bayt. Meet Imam al Hussein. Imam asks him, what is the news from Kufa? Look at what Faraz Daq tells the Imam. Al Qulub ma'ak wa suyuf ma'a bani Umayyah. That their hearts are with you, but their swords are with the Umayyads. Basically, what Faraz Daq told the Imam was, you're going towards a trap. Faraz Daq did not understand. Remember, there are darajat, levels of understanding. Faraz Daq, despite being a great poet, maddah of Ahlul Bayt, salamu alayhi, a praiser of the words of Ahlul Bayt and the sifat of Ahlul Bayt, did not understand the mission of Imam Hussein alayhi salam completely. Look at what the Imam says. Sadaqtu lillahi al-amr wa kullu yawmin rabbuna huwa fi sha'an. Look at the response. Allahu Akbar. Imam says to Farazdaq that I have with all honesty devoted this affair to Allah. And my Lord is at work every day. Meaning what you see, I don't see. Because I see the reality of God. I see we, the reality that Allah is present with us every day. Rabbuna huwa fi kullu wa kullu yawmin rabbuna huwa fi shan. It's the ayah from Surah Rahman. Farazdak is confused. Farazdak is like, I just told you you're going, that, they're, that their swords are with Banu Umayyah, but their hearts are with you, that they're munafiqs. What does the Imam say now? Subhanallah, Allahu Akbar. In nazala al qada bima nuhib fa nahmadullah ala na'ma'ihi. If the result comes in the way that we would love it, where we would want it, then we will praise Allah for that. Meaning, if we are victorious and the people of Kufa do welcome us and we are successful in our mission, then we praise Allah, nahmadullah. For his blessings. And he is the one deserving of, of all forms of thanks. No one but Allah. But if the result of this comes as you are saying, not as we want. It's not abad. It's not far from. Yub'ad. Man kan al hakni yatuhu wa taqwa sariratuhu. Then the Imam says, it is not distant. It is not distant. It is not far fetched. For the one whose niyyah is truth and his consciousness and everything that is in his mind is the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning, long story short, if you are with me, Hussein, he's saying, I'm not guaranteeing you victory in dunya. What I'm guaranteeing you is that you are on the path of haq with Allah. Subhanallah. Either they understand or they don't understand. I don't know if you've picked up on the point I'm trying to mention here. Nukta muhimma jiddan. This is one of the most important points in the mission of Imam Hussein salam. This is the difference between Farazdak and Wahab. Wahab is from where and Farazdak is from where. But why did Farazdak not have the tawfiq to go with Imam Hussein, but Wahab had the tawfiq? Wahab is an 18-year-old Christian convert. Farazdak is one of the most famous poets of the Islamic civilization. Look at what Allah's tawfiq is, really. Even Abdullah ibn Abbas, the same thing. Abdullah ibn Abbas did not understand imma nasr, imma shahada. Abdullah ibn Abbas meant well. He had great intentions always towards Amir al muminin towards Imam al Hassan, towards Imam al Hussein, always, and he was a loyal Shia. But did Abdullah ibn Abbas truly understand the mission of Imam al Hussein in the way Habib did, in the way Wahab did, in the same level, in the same way? No. 
despite Abdullah bin Abbas, Abdullah ibn Abbas being Hebrew Ummah, right? The writer and the ink of the Ummah. I'm not putting down Abdullah ibn Abbas. Rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi. Great, com loyal Shia of Ahlul Bayt. But their tawfiqat are at different levels, brothers and sisters. Imam's own cousin, his own friends, even Abdullah ibn Ja'far, rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi. Could try to convince Imam and Hussein on numerous occasions not to leave. You're going into a trap. Don't do it. Again, it's not to say Abdullah bin Jafar, may Allah bless him, because then he gave his children for shahada, obviously. We know that. He gave them as a gift to Imam and Hussein. He said, at least take my kids with you then. Subhanallah. But even Abdullah ibn Jafar did not fully understand the takalif of the imama. The obligations of the imama that if the imam did not go to the city of Kufa, that forever Ahlul Kufa would have a hujjah on the imam for Yom Al Qiyamah. They would have a proof on him. That the obligations of the imama, of the divine appointment of imama, required the imam to go on this mission. Some people understood it completely. Some people understood only some of it. And that's okay. It doesn't mean that they're bad people. It doesn't mean that they were not good companions. No. But look how Allah blessed an 18-year-old Christian convert to understand this mission in a way that maybe Abdullah bin Abbas or Farazdak maybe did not perceive it in the same way completely. I'm not saying that they're better or worse. I'm saying just... Allah, Allah, Allah guides, when Allah chooses someone, Allah chooses someone. Because He sees something in their heart. He sees some potential in their heart. Imkaniya, He sees something within them. And He chooses them. John. Look. John, of all people. <laughs> Subhanallah. Became a martyr at the hands of Imam Hussein. And all those other big people, Abdullah, you know, Abdullah bin Zubair and others, they took their own path. They ended up dying anyways, but they didn't die on the path of the Imam. This is what we call the sincerity of faith. Sallu ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Sometimes, my dear brothers, some of these people are simply guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't know what else to say. That there is some deep ikhlas and sincerity in their hearts. Maybe it's a simple sincerity. Maybe sometimes Imam is looking for that simple sincerity in our hearts. That simple submission to his cause and his mission. And then he finds people like Wahab, people like John. Where the big, big people, Ma'rufin, didn't have the tawfiq to join for whatever reason. We read in Arbab al Maqatil that when the women were brought out onto the battlefield, imagine this scene. You know, we have a riwayah. I'll narrate it tomorrow night. It's heartbreaking riwayah about Karbala. I'll narrate it tomorrow night, inshallah. But you can just imagine the scene. I won't describe it now. Tomorrow night, I'll, I will narrate that, that, that riwayah. But you can just close your eyes and imagine the scene in Karbala. And now imagine Sukaina, salamullahi alayha. Sukaina bint al Hussein. The little daughter of Imam al Hussein. What trauma did that did those little eyes of hers have to see? Like what kind of traumatic experience is it for a child of that little age to experience that kind of event in Karbala? Alama Zanjani and others, including Kafami narrate. 
that she ran out into the battlefield after her father was killed. At some point at the night, just before they were leaving Karbala, she says, Rameitu bi nafsi ala jasadi abi. And I threw myself onto the body of my father. But brothers, do you want to know something? Wa gariba wa imama. But what was this body missing? The ra'as of Hussein, salam Imagine, Sukaina alayhi salam is jumping on, throwing herself onto the headless body of her father. Now what has already happened to the body of her father? Suliba ma kana alayhi. His body was looted. You think she jumped on his body before they looted it? No. What else did they do to his body? The riwayat state that they crushed his front. Then they turned him over and they began crushing his throat and his chest and his back on both sides. And in fact, they were reciting abyant and poetry as they were doing it. So imagine now Sukaina alayhi salam jumping onto, onto the body of Imam al Hussein. She says, I then heard a voice come from the neck of my father. Qaf Ami relates this, one of the reliable muhaddithin and our, some of our ulama in Arbab al Muqatil. She then says, And from his neck came a voice, not from his head. So she's hearing this voice, obviously in the angelic, min alam al-malakut, of course, Sayyidu Sukaina was attached to that world. And she heard a voice, Fadkuruni, remember me, Fandibuni, and mourn for me. And whenever you see water or a shaheed, remember me. Just imagine that scene, my dear brothers and sisters. Imagine you have a six-year-old girl or a seven-year-old girl or an eight-year-old girl and she is sitting on the headless body of her father, listening to his voice. And she then, they have to pry her body off of the body of her father because some of the traditions say that they could not find her in Karbala. Where was Sukaina? Where has she gone now? This young girl endured so much. I want to tell you about some of the other children in Karbala. In the Maktal, in some of the Arbab al Maqatil, we read that there were two children that died on the day of Karbala. When Zainab gathered all the family and the kids, she was missing two children. There were two children holding each other and sleeping. Do you know what she tried to do? She tried to wake them up. The problem was these two little children would not wake up. They were Abd rahman bin Aqil bin Abi Talib. These were the two children of Abd rahman bin Aqil bin Abi Talib. He had two children, Sa'ad and Aqil. The riwayat state that they died of thirst and terror. And the two little boys were found holding each other as they died. Their mother was Khadija bint Ali who died in Kufa. She lost her husband and her two children. And we have so many examples of this, of the Ahlul Bayt, salamu alayhim ajma'een. The riwayah tell us that Khuli left with the head of Imam al Hussein, and the remainder of the heads came with Shimr, first towards Ubaidullah bin Ziyad, then towards Yazid in Sham. Khuli comes to Kufa with the head of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. I'll just narrate this story to you. Khuli was one of the murderers and the butchers of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Khuli takes the head of Imam. He comes to the gate of Ubaidullah bin Ziyad in Kufa. He now realizes that the court is closed. He takes the head of Imam al Hussein home, like it's as if it's some kind of a prize. Naudhu billah. Imagine this he's holding the head of Imam al Hussein, Khuli. Khuli takes the head home to his wife. He had two wives. One of the wives was home at that time. He gets into bed with her. 
And she asks him, what is the news? He says, I have come with more than gold and silver of the world. She says, what is the gold and silver that you have brought me? That I have come with the head of Hussein ibn Ali. She then begins to curse him and says that I want talaq from you. I don't want anything to do with you. You say you're bringing gold and silver, yet you come with the head of the son of Rasulullah. What is wrong with you? Do you know where he put the head of Imam al-Hussein? Shall I narrate that to you? He put it in the bucket that they wash dirty clothes. Yes. Ijana. Right? It's the basin that they wash, that do the taqseel of libas and clothes. He put it in the bucket. Or some say underneath that bucket. The place where they wash dirty clothes. That's, that's how much disrespect he had for the head of Imam Hussain his wife gets out of bed and runs out to go towards the head of Imam Hussain and she says all I could see was Amud was a pillar of nur mina sama ilal ard a pillar of light from the sama from the heavens coming to the earth why not from the heavens to the earth because in the Hussein if he's sama akbaru minhu fil ard because the Hussein of the heavens is greater than the Hussein in the earth. This is another dalil to this. She says that all I saw was a light from the heavens coming down to the earth, and I could not see anything but white birds moving their wings around the head of Imam al Hussein, which was kept underneath the basin where we wash our dirty clothes in Kufa. وسيعلم الذين ظلموا أي منقلب ينقلبون رحم الله من قرأ سورة المباركة الفاتحة مع صلاة على محمد وآل محمد